is often portrayed as an onslaught on the wealthy, but it is often the poor who are the most vulnerable. The affluent live in fear of crime, but equally here, for example, in the sprawling township of Deepslert, residents are terrified of criminals. Fed up with police, they often take the law into their own hands, leading to the chilling frequency of mob justice. That is what we explore today, but please be warned, the visuals you are about to see are hard to look at. Dipsluit, a product of the new South Africa. On the northwest of Johannesburg, it was established in 1995. Since then, it's mushroomed. It's difficult to get accurate figures, but it's estimated to have well over 250,000 residents. It's also plagued by mob justice. Police confirmed 21 incidents in the past three years. And that's only the ones that came to their attention. To find out what's driving this, we met up with Golden Tika, a resident and a journalist. He says crime here is bad. I would regard this as one of the most dangerous places around Johannesburg. It came to a point whereby everyone is becoming scared. When it says 7 o'clock in the evening, you make sure that you, are, you lock yourself into your own homes. Those who are found on the street at midnight, they risk their lives 100%. Overcrowding and lack of jobs make the situation worse. The unemployment rate is high, and we also have such a huge influx of foreigners who comes to Deep Sloot. It has become Park Station. People from our neighboring borders, they come here. Professor Anton Harbour has written a book on the township. People from around the country, from neighboring countries, have poured into Deep Sloot as a place on the edge of Johannesburg where they can get, I suppose, a foothold in the city to look for jobs and opportunities. But it's meant it's grown incredibly fast in a very short uh, period of time. The core of Deep Sluit, what's called the resettlement area in Deep Sluit, is one of the most dense and poor areas where dozens um, of families have to share uh, taps and toilets and no electricity and a very high, very high level of crime and mob justice is rampant. I described it in my book, Deep Slurt, um, as, as probably the mob justice capital of the country and maybe even the world. As a journalist, Golden has covered over 50 mob attacks. As recently as September last year, he filmed a mob on the rampage when they caught a Nyope addict breaking into a house. In October, locals hunted down an alleged thief. There was this young boy in, in between the ages of 23 or 25 somewhere. Um, I got there, it was on Saturday morning when I received a call. I rushed to the scene and I found him lying down on the ground. He was beaten up by the community after he tried to steal a radio from someone's car. Yeah, there were three of them. It is alleged that there were three and the two of them managed to escape, but this other one was cornered by the residents. So they brought him to the street and they beat him up. They tied his legs um, with uh, wires, with wires, yeah. In November, police rescued two victims from another mob, arresting two suspects. Sadly, bystanders may even be targeted, simply because they're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Golden recalled one particularly gory incident in 2011, where angry residents turned on an innocent man when they heard his foreign accent. They were demolishing sharks that were said to be uh, sharks where criminals were living in. Uh, when they got there, a multitude of people gathered there. They were burning the sharks. And, and came up this guy by the name of Farai from Zimbabwe. Yeah, as he was approaching the multitude of people, he received a call. Farai was an innocent bystander. When they heard his foreign accent, a mob turned on him. They took him forward. They led him straight to where there was a big burning car caravan over there. 
the caravan was burning in huge frame. They wanted him to, to go through that caravan. So anyone can do that. He took his chances. He went there, but he could see that, no, it's something that he couldn't die. He, try, he, he tried to run away. They cornered him. He fell down. They started beating him. The tragedy did not stop there. Okay, as Farai was lying on the, on the ground, uh, there was this old man, he had a wooden plank, and he started beating him on his head. He bashed him on the head seven times. And this other guy, he came and he, he grabbed him by his private parts and he threw punches on him. He punched him, he punched him very hard. Then, shockingly, a child finished him off. There was this also a young, a young girl, could be in between the ages of 16 or 17. She took a rock and just threw it on top of his head, cracking his brain. And the man was lying there, dead. We asked Simpiwe Sigoi, a clinical psychologist, to shed light on the mentality of a mob. When you are in a group, the, the group energy takes over. And uh, because the group energy, me it means, what, what, do, what does the group energy mean? It means that uh, your sense of accountability and responsibility gets captured by the group. Uh, such that now you are, you are in a crowd, uh, you, can, you can be able, you feel uh, confident to engage in other acts that you would normally not do as an individual. Like for example, getting into violent acts, throwing stones. And it can have a serious impact on children. If it happens all the time, or most of the time, then the children learn this, the, 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 this violent behavior, and, and then it, it, it can form part of their lives. They, they can feel like this is how you react to situations, this is how you solve problems, by um, engaging into groups and, and performing acts that are that may be violent or undesirable in nature. In 2012, two suspects were finally put behind bars for Farai's murder. Shockingly, one of them was a minor at the time of the attack. Coming up, what happens when mobs turn on the innocent?